Hi everybody, Pastor Tim here with another edition of Give Me Five. Today we are continuing in the series Spiritual Things in Church by looking at 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12 today, verses 7 through 11. Let's look at the scripture. This is from the NASB. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, and to another the effecting of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another the distinguishing of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually, just as he wills. Now we identify these nine gifts that are listed here as the manifestation spiritual gifts, uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, they are available to Spirit-filled believers, uh, but they don't get to pick and choose, right? The one thing I'd like us to recognize today is that of all of these gifts listed, we can see seven of them in the Gospels in Jesus' earthly ministry. Now, we know that Jesus was fully God and fully man, but he subjected himself, God subjected himself to some human limitations. Now, what does that mean? That Jesus was limited? Not at all. It's just that when he walked in a mortal body, he was tempted in all points just as we are, yet without sin, as the book of Hebrews tells us. That he experienced pain and sorrow and grief and separation and disappointment. He also experienced joy and friendship and, and all of those things that made him very, very human. In his humanity, he needed the Holy Spirit just as we need the Holy Spirit. Uh, we see that in the fact that he came to John the Baptist and, and said, John, I want you to baptize me. Of course, John raised a fuss over that, right? He wasn't worthy to even untie his sandals. But Jesus said, look, to fulfill all righteousness, this has to be done. And we know that when he was baptized in the Jordan, that the, the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove came down upon him and the voice from heaven from God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So we see that in Jesus' earthly ministry, he, if, I guess we could say, restricted himself to walk as a human being. Why is that important? Because he showed us how to live. Listen, you want to be like Jesus? Well, that's more than uh, being holy. That's more than simply treating others the way you'd want to be treated. That's all part of being like Jesus. But another important part of being like Jesus is being open to be being used uh, by the Holy Spirit in the miraculous. We see seven out of nine gifts in operation in the earthly ministry of the man Jesus. The two in this list that we don't see are tongues and interpretation of tongues. But what use would that have been? The Holy Spirit had not yet been sent. There would be no one to understand. Now, we do know that Jesus got away by himself to pray. Who's to say that uh, in those times of prayers uh, that there was something beyond his earthly language at play? We don't know that. It would not have benefited the disciples to witness that. So we see, and except for tongues and interpretation, that Jesus himself uh, was used in these gifts. Now, to say all, say all that, but I got to say this, okay, we have to be careful here. To be like Jesus, no one is going to be exactly like Jesus because Jesus is the only way. Jesus was one of a kind in the fact that he was fully God and fully man. But don't forget, Jesus promised his disciples, greater works will you do in my name than what you have seen me do. Huh? Is Could it be that we have... Uh, convinced ourselves that there's no way that we could be like Jesus in these supernatural ways? I believe, I fully believe 
that this is what God intended for the church from the very beginning. We see as we look in the book of Acts, we see uh, right away that the apostles first were used in miraculous ways, speaking healing into people's bodies and, and the boldness that they operated in, which was something that they didn't have before the day of Pentecost. But we see throughout the 30-year history of the church that's, that's uh, recounted in the book of Acts, we see that uh, the power came to uh, the deacons next, and they were able to do uh, miraculous things. And then as it came down, the average person, uh, the average believer in Jesus Christ, was able to be used in miraculous ways. Uh, last Sunday, I used the passage from the end of uh, Mark chapter 16, where it's Jesus' great commission when he said, these signs will follow them that believe, not just professional clergy, not just professional Christians, but those who believe. And he lists these signs, that they will cast out demons, they'll speak in new tongues, they'll lay the hands on the, on the sick, they will recover, uh, they'll be able to handle serpents without harm. If they drink poison, it won't hurt them. And we have to understand that being like Jesus includes the possibility of all of these things. So, with that in mind, do you want to be like Jesus? Mm -hmm.